Hello everyone, I am Tiffany Starr, and you are talking with Tiff. So, I want to talk about The Last of Us 2. There are right reasons to be upset with The Last of Us 2 rumors, and wrong reasons to be upset with The Last of Us 2 rumors. And I'm going to go over them. One of the right reasons to be upset with The Last of Us rumors is the treatment of the development team over at Naughty Dog. When the leak came out, conditions of how the developers were being treated came to light. And they're negative. Apparently they're not getting bonuses. And they're being run through the grinder to fix anything else in the game before release. Let's just read the article and we'll go from there. Naughty Dog members have worked hard on The Last of Us Part 2 is an understatement. In the game's recent delay that bought the studio three months of extra time to polish what some are already calling Naughty Dog's best game, despite not even being out yet. Reports from developers past, present, say the studio continues to put in long, grueling hours to adhere to high Naughty Dog standard. This delay didn't give the team a break, but allowed more time to crunch before release. People thinking the extension is somehow to relieve stress or the workload on the team are wrong, said one developer. The first thing that they wanted to reiterate is that we aren't slowing down the pace. Reportedly, some developers are even hoping The Last of Us 2 will flop. However unlikely that is. And it is unlikely, let's be fair. Half the people bitching about the game are going to buy it and play it anyways, just so they can bitch about it more. You know it's true. To prove crunching is not viable in the long run. A recent Kotaku report covered the development of not just The Last of Us Part 2, but also Uncharted 4 and The Lost Legacy. In it, the Outlet spoke with 13 current and former Naughty Dog employees about the studio's alleged tough working conditions, which have led to a large exodus of people from the company. 70% of the non-lead designers that worked on Uncharted 4 are no longer with the company. 70% of their workers? That's a fucking lot. After the tumultuous development of Uncharted 4, including a huge reboot midway through development, some of the leadership wanted to ensure work on The Last of Us Part 2 would be healthier. Clearly that's not the case. While the team attempted to build the groundwork for The Last of Us 2 early on, playtests as recently as 2018 created a number of developmental shifts, story changes, and other revisions to the narrative. To make up for this, the staff stays late, even though it's not explicitly required, working well above the suggested 40 hours. You feel obligated to be there because everyone else is there later. If an animation needed to be put in and you weren't there to help the animator, you're now blocking the animator, and they may give you grief. It may not even be spoken. It may just be a look. Man, you totally screwed me last night by not being here at 11 p.m. I mean, even if they're working late and getting their regular pay, working fucking 13 hours, and that's if we're being generous, a day for five days a week? If there's 24 hours in a day, right, and you go to work, like I said, generously at 10 in the morning, and you don't get home till 11 at fucking night, you're an hour away before the next day, which means you might get to sleep at midnight, but you might want to eat dinner, you might want to shower, if you have a cat, feed the cat, or a dog, or whatever animal you fucking have. And even if you went to sleep at midnight, you'd be lucky to get enough sleep before you have to be back in the next day and work another 13 hour shift. Your life is pretty much gone, because even if you work at 10, you'd probably have to wake up, I don't know, 8, depending how close you are. So you can leave by 9 to get there by 10. Crunching is part of the jar, brown bro. But they've got an extra extension. That should be time to breathe, not time to crunch. The only reason you should crunch is because a part of it's not finished or broken or needs improvement. That's the only reason. If the game was going to release like three months prior, then the game was probably already ready to go. So what the fuck are they doing? Why are they pushing them so hard, and for what reasons? Despite some hoping it will flop to help mitigate the crunching problem, it's expected to be one of the year's most beloved games. We'll find out May 29th. Yes, we will. I'll probably be streaming it. CBR.com. The Last of Us Part 2's leaks may be a turning point for developers in crunch. Crunch has been a hot-button topic. Now a disgruntled employee may have leaked significant Last of Us 2 sequences. Could this be the breaking point? Are people getting tired of being forced to stay late hours without overtime on little sleep for months on end? No, games take a long time to make. The Last of Us 2 was in development for how long? 2016. That's when it was announced. And it was announced with a trailer, right? So they were already working on it probably before E3 of 2016. 
That's, what, four years ago. So if they've been crunching hard for four fucking years, it's enough to make someone leak critical information about The Last of Us 2 right before its release. Naughty Dog has been the subject of poor working conditions and damaging crunch periods that harm its own employees. And not just with The Last of Us 2, remember. They've been doing this since, as far as I know, Uncharted 4 and Uncharted The Lost Legacy, which happened right after. So it's been quite a while, and I wouldn't be surprised if it was crunch time way before those two games as well. Who knows? Maybe they were doing this shit back when they were making Jack and Daxter. Fuck, maybe they were doing this when they were making Crash Bandicoot games on PlayStation fucking 1. Another major reason to be upset about The Last of Us 2 leaks is ruining the story. Specifically, the death of of a beloved character. I will not mention who this character is, but this character who is loved doesn't live according to the leaks. And people are pretty pissed about that. Not only that this character died, but they died in an unsavory way. It's a good reason to be upset about the leaks if someone you really care about from the game just gets axed. And in a shitty way, too, according to the leaks. But. You have to remember, The Last of Us is probably, if not the most, one of the most depressing games ever made. It is such a depressing game. Within the first, like, 15 minutes, Joel's daughter dies in his arms, and you played as her moments before. And that was gut-wrenching, and that was the first fucking 15 minutes! And you think the rest of the game is gonna go uphill, it never does. It never fucking does. It always goes downhill. It's the most depressing game I've ever played. And with that in mind, why are you surprised they would kill someone you care about, Game of Thrones style, in the sequel? It's like at the end of season one of Game of Thrones, where they killed Ned Stark off. So people kept watching to see if we would get justice for Ned Stock's untimely and unjustified death. And instead, what we got was Rob Stock and his wife and his unborn child murdered. They all got wiped out at the Red Wedding. So now you're even more pissed off and you're three seasons in with no fucking justice. <laughs> and that's pretty much the last of us in a nutshell. You shouldn't expect people to get through unscathed, even people you like. It's a fucking brutal, awful world. I understand why people can be upset about that aspect of the game, but I personally am not. I was already embracing heartache for not just one, but two characters I love to die. Or even people in the game I don't even know yet that they'll build up that I'll end up liking and then killed off. So that's another reason. And the last reason, and I don't know, this is another one I don't have an issue with, kind of like the one we just went over. The Last of Us 2 developers hear the concerns over the homophobia in latest trailer. Now, I don't think it's homophobia, per se. It's called Bury Your Gaze. It's a cliche in which homosexual characters in mainstream entertainment properties are seen as more expendable than their heterosexual counterparts. So I understand why some people might be upset about the bury your gays thing, because a lot of gay people are just killed off in media. But I'm not too upset about it. You can't be upset when media treats LGBT couples the same way they treat their heterosexual couples. If anything, that's progress, I think. Sure, you shouldn't kill every gay character you have in a show or a video game, but if a gay person dies and it serves the plot in a meaningful way, then I have no issues with it. I don't know if it's a trope unnatural. All I know is it's uh, a common theme in media to kill off LGBT people. Or at least, uh, LG people. There's not enough trans people in the media to kill off. It's almost envious that you can just throw in a bunch of lesbians and kill some of them off as opposed to like the five trans women on fucking mainstream TV. Now we gotta get to the real shit. The reasons not to hate The Last of Us. If you want to find the scummiest, shittiest dumb fucks talking about this, then you have to go to YouTube. The Last of Us 2 Leaks. And just with that, let's see what we come up with. If you don't like The Last of Us 2 leaks, you're homophobic. 
Whoever Griffin Gaming is, I bet his dick is incredibly tiny. The Last of Us 2 leaks are pathetic, and it's Griffin Gaming again, and if you noticed, he put a rainbow background behind Ellie. Whoever this person is must really hate gay people. <laughs> maybe he's in the closet and he hasn't come out yet. Or maybe he's upset that his last girlfriend or wife left him for a woman. Oh look, another one! The Last of Us 2 leaks, what the fuck is this? And again... Look at this character. Naughty Dog made characters trans-friendly. As if that's a bad thing. I mean, people should just be people-friendly, regardless of if they're trans. You know, trans people exist, right? They are people. So, seeing one in a game shouldn't blow your fucking mind, pal! So when they play as a woman or something like that, they get super offended, they get upset. They see trans characters, or lesbians, or gay people in video games, they get upset. It's like... I, I swear to God, every cis fucking white conservative dude with a small dick, because they all cis conservative white dudes have small dicks, it's, it's a fact, look it up. They always think when they pop in a game, it's just gonna be, I'm gonna play as a white dude, and then there's gonna be a woman I can fuck later on, or something like that. It's all they care about, because they want to live out fantasies they can't live in real life because their dicks are too small. Sensitive society? Who the fuck is this idiot? We might have to look at this fucking moron. His video is only 4 minutes and 24 seconds. We could probably delve into this fucking inbreds video and get through it pretty fast. Some of these videos are not obvious. They could be talking about it could be damaging just because there were leaks. But ones like this, or ones like this, or ones like this, these ones are obvious what their gripes are. So this is the first reason not to be upset over The Last of Us 2 leaks. That there are LGBT characters in it. And for one, we don't even know if one of the characters is trans. For example, I already have the video up. So this trailer is not a spoiler. This trailer came out in 2017. But this trailer has the character that everyone's complaining about and talking about. And we're gonna get to that in two shakes of a lamb's dick. Ready? Stop. This character right here, who's in the video being hung. She is the one people are bitching about from the leaks. Now, the leaks don't say if she's a lesbian. The leaks don't say if she's trans. The leaks don't say if she's non-binary. But, people are assuming she is, because, according to them, and when I say them, I mean conservatives, and Nazis, and white supremacists, and incels, they're calling this woman trans or lesbian because they don't think she is attractive. They think every woman in the game should have big tits like me, long hair like me, nice makeup like me, and a big ass like me that you can't see. But I got that booty. And it's it's awesome. So they're pissed off that this woman doesn't look very attractive. So they're coming up with excuses. They think that because she's not attractive, they're trying to mock it to LGBT people. For example, if we go back here, this idiot sensitive society with the small penis. This is the kind of shit that people make when they're trying to come up with excuses to why the woman is not attractive. They'll say they're trying to cater to the LGBT community. You know, they're making her look a little more rugged, giving her some slight masculine features. Don't let her look like big chested and you know, look make her look dirty and shit. Maybe she's trans, maybe she's lesbian, maybe she's non-binary, who knows? Because she's not attractive, she has to be one of those things. And it's them trying to like rationalize themselves that why isn't she a good looking woman? I don't understand. Why isn't this woman in a post-apocalyptic world filled with despair and danger around every corner and few resources not attractive? Why isn't she wearing lipstick and heels and have a perm and her nails done? What the fuck? <laughs> They're only making her unattractive to appeal to LGBT people as if that makes any fucking sense as if lesbians don't like hot women I like hot women 
but I'm not gonna bitch if there's an ugly woman in my fucking game. You know who else had this problem? This non-existent problem, but people said it was a problem, and when I say people, again, conservatives, they said it was a problem because she wasn't attractive? That woman. That woman is in an awesome game, Star Wars Jedi The Fallen Order, and she used to be a Jedi in the game. She fiddled around with the dark side. She's worried that she'll fully embrace the darkness within her and use the dark side for like really cool lightning and shit. But she's not very attractive by societal standards in America. They were complaining about her too, calling her lesbian just because her hair's short. Apparently no one has seen a view to a kill. Mayday is not particularly feminine, but she's riding that dick. So yeah, this is another character that, you know, the same people complained about. Like I said, same people. I'm encompassing conservatives, incels, uh, white supremacists, Nazis. People who don't want unattractive women in their games for whatever reason. They don't understand that people come in all shapes and sizes. But the truth is, this woman that we're looking at here, she's probably just a cisgendered woman who's not particularly attractive to some people. I'm, I know some people who would love to fuck this woman. And even if they were trans, why would it matter? Trans representation, lesbian representation, what's the problem with having those in video games? Why are people so upset about it? Why do they call people woke just for existing? Oh no, there's a lesbian in this game. People must be woke at Naughty Dog! They don't even know what fucking woke means. They're just people that exist, so they're incorporated in the game. Do you want every fucking person in the game to be just a cis dude who's straight and a cis woman who's straight? What the fuck? Think about it this way. They say people are woke for putting LGBT people in media. Then what is it called when you don't put LGBT people in media specifically because you don't want them in there? What, what would we call that? Oh, God. Oh, oh. Would, would that be homophobia? Would that be a uh, bigoted? Bigot? Nah, that sounds like, a, sounds like the right term. Bigot. They're the same kind of fucking idiots that complained that Jill's skirt in the Resident Evil 3 remake was turned into shorts. The same kind of fucking morons that are upset that Cassandra was even a selectable character in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And you know what really chaps their fucking balls? Their tiny little raisin balls? The fact that Cassandra's story is the canon story of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Oh, that chaps their fucking, their fucking tiny little peanut testicles. Oh, they, they get so fucking upset with that. Anyone who's watching this on YouTube who disagrees and thinks that LGBT people shouldn't be in there, you're a stupid fucking moron. There was another leak that people are getting upset about. And it is the second reason not to be upset about The Last of Us 2 leaks. At some point in the game, there are villains who are white supremacists. And people, for some reason, are upset that bigoted people who are closed-minded and don't like black, brown, Asian, or any other type of diverse group are, like, the villains. Why? Who would be offended that white supremacists are the enemy in a video game. Oh, fuck. Oh, this is another one that's a brain teaser. Oh, who would, who would be super upset that white supremacists are the bad guys in the game? Oh, oh, that's right. White supremacists. I think white supremacists make sense as villains. A group that hates people for arbitrary reasons is the villain. That's a good villain. Someone you hate because they hate you. The Last of Us 2 villains are reportedly homophobic Christians. The Last of Us 2 villains are cisgendered straight white guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if the villains in The Last of Us 2 are supposed to be homophobic white supremacist Christians, they're gonna be fucking white, you idiots. You fucking morons. <laughs> I'm, and I'm not talking to you guys. I'm talking to the people who are like, oh, can you believe that white supremacists are white? <laughs> Industrial Dinosaur, if the first game was themed around love, 
then we're fucked because the first game was depressing as hell. This is going to show the brutal, ugly side of humanity in this game, I believe, but they showed that in the other one too with the cannibals. Fuck, the cannibals are more relatable than the goddamn white supremacists. <laughs> At least they can justify, hey, we don't have a lot of food, we're starving to death, we might have to eat a person, we don't want to, we might have to. But these guys are just like, uh-oh, end of the world? Let's go kill some gays. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, their priorities are fucking stupid. <laughs> they are also racist and kill non-whites and non-cisgendered people on site. So yeah, they don't like trans people. They don't like black people, brown people, Asian people, lesbians, gays. These people are just conservative Republicans. That's it. Like, the enemies in the game are conservative Republicans. <laughs> and that's why... They're all upset. <laughs> they don't like being portrayed as the bad people, but when your ideas are this fucking terrible, and this is what you believe in, fucking embrace it. Just be like, yeah, we're terrible people. We'll be the villains. <laughs> what, do they want to be portrayed as the fucking heroes? We want to take away people's rights and murder them. Can we be the heroes of your video game? <laughs> I bet fucking Nazis think there's a shadowy Jewish cabal. <laughs> that... That, that engineered the virus just so more people would become lesbians and trans, and the only side effect is they turn into spore monsters. <laughs> and the only way to stop them is to cleanse the world of the LGBT and other minorities. <laughs> so being upset that the enemies of homophobic white supremacist Christians is not a good reason to hate The Last of Us 2 leaks. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and be sure to subscribe so you're notified when the second part of this video releases. See ya!